And at the end of the fourth day, she said, I want to ask you something. And I said, okay. She said, will you take my children? I said, sure. Where do you want me to take, where do you want me to take them? <laughs> she said, no, will you take my children? Wow. And she was, my, she was holding my hands so tight and looking in my eyes. And I looked back at her and I said, yes. All right, um, I'm Laura Cathcart Robbins. This is the only one in the room, but I'm never the only one in this room because as usual, my boyfriend, producer, and co-host Scott Slaughter, who I call Hun, is here as well. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Um, just at the top, I want to just say that we both have colds. <laughs> right, it's <laughs> so. going to be a crackly, noisy sounding. Hopefully not, hopefully hey. not. I, I used my inhaler and um, took some cough medicine <laughs> this morning, so hopefully I don't cough or sneeze. Um, but if we do, that's that's why. A little disclaimer. Yes. Um, okay, now we need to talk about Kim for a minute. Kimberly, who I call Kim. Um, she was on the sick. She was on a sitcom with my ex-husband Brian Robbins. Did you know that? I, you know, I just found that out when we interviewed Stephen Rifkin not long ago. Right, 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 right. So we interviewed Stephen Rifkin for season four, mm -hmm. which premieres in January. Um, Brian and Kim were two of the stars of Head of the Class, and I think the story goes, and you can correct me here, that so. You guys were dating, you and Steven, and Steven came down to see you on the set and he met Brian, is that how it goes? No. No, okay. <laughs> we me. often have to hear the other version of Steven's stories, by the way. Tell me. Okay, so uh, Brian and I were doing- Head of the class. Head of the class. <laughs> and there was some kind of junket in New York, you know, you do a press tour okay. or whatever. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, oh, I'm gonna go to this club and meet some of my friends from, you know, back in the New York or whatever. And I was from New York also, so I went with him, and that's how I met Stephen. Oh. So Stephen and Brian were, were already childhood, friends. really good friends. Yeah. Well, they yes. weren't childhood friends, but it must have been but, before that. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. All right, so, and Head of the Class was like the Friday night lineup on ABC, right? Right. It was like the show to watch. Everybody that was my age watched this show right. religiously. Yes. Didn't miss an episode. It was back in the day when there were just you know, the three main net networks, right. NBC, ABC, and CBS. Yes. Yeah, everybody still yeah. knows the name and a lot of the characters. Yeah, right. even though people always think that Brian is, um, um, uh, what was John Travolta's character, character's name on Welcome Back, Cotter? Vinny. Vinny Barbarino. Vinny Barbarino. Yeah. <laughs> people really? always think he's Vinny Barbarino. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, which was a 70s um, classroom sitcom. Anyway, going back to Kim, so, so Brian and Steven are best friends, and I've been good friends with your sister, Lisa, yes. for a very long time. Um, and she's always kept me up with what's going on with you. And it was Lisa who said we should bring you in for the podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah. then, then we heard your story and we were like, oh, definitely. Yeah, we it's unbelievable. To... Um, so I'm not going to, more, no more further ado, and I'm going to introduce you. Uh, Kimberly Russell. Actress, producer, wife, and mom of eight, mm. eight, eight children. Um, she is probably the she is probably best known as Sarah on the long-running hit ABC show Head of the Class. Uh, Kimberly grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Attended the Fame High School of Performing Arts, um, as did Lisi Vidal on episode twenty-one. Um, Kimberly went on to numerous episodic television shows such as New York Undercover, ER which is also Lisa's resume, by the way. Mm. Isn't that funny? That is. That's yeah. right. Lisa and I, yeah, we did New York Undercover together. Yeah, yeah, and she was on ER as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, Kimberly was handpicked and working um, by and working with Academy Award winner Sidney Portier to star in the hit film Ghost Dad, which starred Bill Cosby. Um, a lot of people know you from that. Yes. A lot of people know you from that movie. Mm. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you, Laura. It's so amazing to be here with you and Hun. Hun. Mm -hmm. I'm Hun. <laughs> Hun is a hunk. Uh, he is you. a hunk. That's He's nice. so handsome. We should put a, a K on the end of the Hun hat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the K is silent. Yes. Oh, that's so funny. Tell me a little bit about you. You grew up in Brooklyn. Um, you started acting at age 14. Is that right? A little bit younger. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, uh, 
11 or 12, I was doing a play at my little camp and this woman came up to me afterwards and said, oh, you, you, you have a really good voice and you should come down and do this radio show that I do every day. It was called the Kitty Kirby Show. Uh -huh. And I said, well, what do you do on the show? And she said, we tell fairy tales. So I dragged my sister and two of my friends and we went together and we all, we read stories every Wednesday. Was right. on, you know, on the radio. And that's how, how I got started. Really early age. And then went to the High School of Performing Arts. Right. Which was depicted in the movie Fame. Fame. And, I, and yes. I, was, uh, I, I was so excited. I got to be an extra in the movie Fame and got to spend oh, you did. time. Yes. And got to spend time with uh, Alan Parker talking Very about cool. my experience there. Yeah. It was just a really magical experience. And I'm still very close with a lot of the people. But, you know, to go to high school and Manhattan every day and, you know, you have musicians and singers and actors and dancers. Yeah. And just everybody was at their creative. It's their, like their the most height creative. of the, Yeah. Yes, yes. Was it like the movie? So much like the movie. Really? So much like the movie. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Uh, there's an actor, Isai Morales. I love who, Isai Morales. Yes. You have to have him on. Yeah. He's, he's so wonderful. you hooked me up with him? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Great. Yes, I remember. I mean, this is part of his story, but there was a time when uh, he slept in the basement of the school. He can elaborate, but he was such a talented actor. And, you know, you have things going on in your life. You don't, you know, whether you're poor or abusive parents, whatever the case is, but he was so dedicated to his art and being able to make it there every day. He, he slept in the basement wow. of the school. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was in love with him on La Bamba. Oh, yeah. Was that what it was called? Yes, yeah. La Bamba. <laughs> yeah. And wasn't Michael DiLorenzo in La Bamba? I think, so. yes. 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 See, how it all See, goes it all goes circle. around, yes. Like Kevin Bacon says. Another head of the classmate. Yes. Um, so tell me, tell me about Head of the Class. Like, tell me about getting it and, and what that was like and what that time of your life was like. Yeah, Head of the Class was, that was my SAG card. Yeah. That was, I had done radio and some stage, but Head of the Class, I went to this audition, met this nice fellow, Michael Elias. He was auditioning uh, actors, and I auditioned for the role of Darlene Merriman, later played by Robin, Robin Givens. Givens, yes. And uh, when I finished the audition, he said, well, stand up, take a bow. You did a really good job. I said, thank you. And about three months later, I start seeing these commercials on television for this show, Head of the Class. And I'm like, wow, that's the show that I'm going to be on. And I think, oh, I guess they didn't hire me. And I get a phone call and they say, uh, yeah, Kimberly. I said, he said, this is Michael. And I, he said, we want you to come and do the show. So... But I knew that Robin Gibbons was cast, so the network had some meeting and whatever and said, we don't want there to just be one person that looks like this on the show, and she was so good, let's have her. So they added me to the cast. So I was, it was it was mixed. It was like, here's this group of kids, like nine actors, they're, they're on the sitcom with Howard Hessman, who was so wonderful. Right, and, and he here just comes come a, off WKRP in Cincinnati. Yes. Yeah. And then here comes this one more person to take up more camera time and space right. and whatever. Yeah. But uh, you were the last castmate added. I was the last castmate added okay. to the original cast. Yeah, the OGs. So, yeah. <laughs> well, but it was great. It was a great experience. At the time, uh, we were filming at Warner Brothers, and Clint Eastwood was shooting next door, and uh, River Phoenix was filming Stand by Me with Corey Feldman, who are who are also friends of mine at the time, mm -hmm. and it was just a great time to be a young actor on a set. Just we were all just going crazy. Yeah, I mean. Just awake, you know, mm -hmm. from our, our creativity, our sexuality, our just experimentation, and you know, just to be in this environment where we're playing high school kids, removed from it, but portraying it on television. How how old were you then? I was twenty one mm -hmm. when I got the show. Mm -hmm. We were all older, yeah. playing younger, yeah, and advised by the As network is most of the time. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, okay, let's strap the boobs down. Let's uh, <laughs> not eat, eat, overeat. Let's uh, shave. You know, all the guys had to shave every day. Right. Put the makeup on, <laughs> you know. No, but it was a great show. It was a great show. It was, I felt like I had a real high school experience with the head of the class crew. Yeah. You know, just growing up with them was, was amazing. Well, and, and truth be told, 
I, as a fan, watched it because there were two black women on the show. I, I wasn't checking for Brian, who I later married, <laughs> but <laughs> I was really like there because there weren't many sitcoms with black women on right, them then. Right. And and you guys were representing for us at that time. Yes. Yeah. So it was and, and you and Robin have very different looks. Right. And and very different characters. I feel like your characters were more like your character as Sarah was more true to who you are. Is it do you think that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Fun. Then then Darlene. Right, then Darlene. Yeah, that was kind of she was playing the uh you know, snooty rich girl who was right. in the school, but yeah. uh, it was a great experience. You know, working with the the young women on the show and, and bonding with them, and I'm still close with them today. You I are? did a play with Robin about two years ago. Oh, that's so cool. She wrote and directed. Well, her mother wrote it, but it was called um, Joy in the Morning. Hmm. And she said, "Oh, I want to get you out of the house with those kids." <laughs> <laughs> Come down and do this play. And That's I said, great. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. So we had to work together. It was a great experience. So and so, tell me. Um, so then you did Ghost Dad after Head of the Class. I did Ghost Dad during Head of the during Class. During Head of the Class. Yes. Okay. All right. And then that was a huge sensation, and that kind of upped your fandom even more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, how did you meet Michael? Uh, Michael, my husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were, I was doing a movie of the week with Stephanie Zimbalist and Finola Hughes. Okay. And uh, my agent said, oh, I've got this Lifetime movie and it's about these prisoners. I said, what is it called? Prison of Secrets. And they want you to whatever. And I thought, okay. I thought it was like, you know, four or five days on a film, but it mm -hmm. ended up taking eight weeks. Oh. With, uh, you know, 70 extras that were women and, uh. We, we, we filmed at an actual prison, and uh, Dan Loria was in the film, and, all, you know, you, you're standing around with 70 women, and, and he was uh, in the crew, one of the, he was a gaffer at the time, and I thought, mm. you know, we're standing around, we're like, he's kind of cute, <laughs> he's kind of cute, that one's kind of cute. And wait, how, how old were you then? Uh, I think I was, like, 29 or 30. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so that's how we met. We met on a on a film set, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, just just thought it would be a uh, just an interesting you know time with with this person. But he ended up being my forever person. He's, he's your person. Yes, he's, uh, my person. he's your hun. He is. He's my hun. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's how, my boo. <laughs> how did you know he was your hun? Uh, when? How did I know? Mm -hmm. I think I know, uh, I knew, I was going to say, you know, every day, he, he, he proves it every day. Uh, I just knew that he was meant for me because like our first or second conversation on the phone, I said, I asked him to tell me that he loved me and he said, what? I just met you. <laughs> Wait, why did you ask him to tell you that? Uh, I, had, I, had, I had come out of relationships with actors. I had dated uh, mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy for a few years, and then uh, <gasps> I had forgot a, about that. Had a, yes. had a had a great <laughs> relationship with George Clooney, and That's right. uh, you know was getting to the age where I, you know and some some other actors, and uh, he said, "Well, I don't even know you." I said, "Yeah, well, I want to hear. I just want to hear how how it sounds when you say those <laughs> words." And he did. He said, oh, "Okay, I love you," and he he never turned back. So. Oh wow. Okay, that's a good dating tip for people. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? The second phone call? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Second phone call. <laughs> See how it sounds when he yes. says, "I love you." Well, I have a weird. I have a lot of theories about relationships, like you two, you and Hun. Uh huh. Okay. It's a five-letter <laughs> radius rule. Okay. If you are within five letters, your name could be first name, last name. It's it's gonna work because you're Laura. Uh huh. You have Cathcart Robbins. Yeah. And your last name is? It's Slaughter. Slaughter. Mm -hmm. So the R and the S. Yeah. And then your first name is? It's David. David. Well, his given first name, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. D and the C. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're a match. Yeah. I dig. I'm going to have to do a little research on that. Yeah. I like it, though. Do a little research. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we've done the research because it yes. works, right? Yeah, right. 11 years. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a hopeless romantic. I'd like to see the two of you get uh, married. Uh, okay. Tie the knot. We, we can right talk about that. Show. Right here on the uh, show. Right here on the show? Yes. Oh, yeah, that'd be really cool. Are you ordained? No, no. But, but I would be willing to do it. <laughs> Wait, Barcy, our yeah, your producer. EP says Barcy is ordained. Let's see how it Let's sounds when you say it. 
Will you say it? Do you take no? Do you <laughs> hey? Yes. Yeah. All right. My dad sorry. needs to be here. You no. have to ask him first. Oh yeah. Too. Oh shit. <laughs> On your knees. We can, right, can call him right now. <laughs> <laughs> call Dr. Cathcart. He just left. Uh, he did just he leave. He was here for the holiday. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you guys were supposed to be together. Yes. And you're deeply in love now, but it, then you were getting to know each other and falling in love with each other, right? Right. Um, how soon after that second conversation where he said, I love you, did you get married? Uh, it was a while. It was about three, three and a half, four years okay. before we got married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember my brother-in-law at the time saying, I, I said, I don't understand. What is it with this guy? When is, what, you know, why does, when is Michael going to ask me to marry him? And he said, well, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? You know, were those things? Yeah. I and, hate that expression. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're not cows. Oh, uh, which one of us is the cow? <laughs> right. And shortly after... He he popped the question. He popped the question. Nice. Yeah. And then you guys had children right away? Uh, we had children like two years later. Okay. Yes. So tell me about your kids. Oh, my my jewels, my gems, my joy was mm -hmm. my first, my daughter, little girl, and then True came along, True Joy. Uh, and then I, I sort of had like a little depression, like... Mm, you know, I don't, you know, because I had so many people say, oh, you're perfect. You have the boy, you have the girl, you know, and then I just didn't feel complete. I wanted one more. Okay. My husband always told me he wanted five children. So I thought I just want to have one more. And then spirit came along. Spirit. So they are spirit. joy, true and spirit. Yes. Joy, true and spirit. And how old is joy? Joy just turned 18. Wow. Yes. Wow. My husband spent the day crying. <laughs> <laughs> because she's an adult now. It's so hard. It, you know what? It, time. You see, time goes so quickly when you have children. You see how fast it goes. Mm -hmm. mm. It just goes so fast. Well, and I mean, pe hopefully people will go to our YouTube channel and, and look at you. But you're incredibly beautiful. Michael is really good looking. Back you're, at you. You're. Thank you. You and Hun. But your children oh, are gorgeous. Oh, they are thank you. absolutely stunning. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm not surprised, but it was, it's hard not to look at them. Like when you, you don't post very many pictures. I have to tell you, like, I would like more, Okay, <laughs> but, but the pictures their, you have I posted. I take their threats seriously. Yeah. Right. Mom. I know. I know. I have that same thing. Yes. Um, but yeah, they're all gorgeous. So, so you, um, have these kids and you kind of put acting on hold for a little bit. Or are you still acting? I'm still acting. Okay. Acting and producing. Yeah. But I mean, when they're little. Oh, when they were little, it, you know, some people have the great gift of prioritizing, being able to uh, focus. Yeah. I'm not that kind of an actor. I'm uh -huh. the kind of actor that it's like, okay, this is what you have to do. You're going to stand here. Let me hear your words. Let me hear you're going to say, okay, let's do it. Let's shoot it. Mm -hmm. um, so I found it very difficult to be on a set with the nanny or my mother calling and saying, okay, what time are you going to finish? When are you going to get here? Yeah. When are you yeah, going to this? When are you yeah, going to that? Yeah. You know, or a kid crying in a trailer. Mm hmm So you... So I put it on hold. You put it on hold. And then so you're, you're <coughs> at... Oh, no, sorry. Um, so tell me, tell me how it was that you became... Were you in the PTA? Yes. Okay. So tell me about that. Yeah. So I was living in Malibu with my mm -hmm. husband and the three kids on the beach. Uh huh. And uh, I just I just felt uh, very strong about what was happening at, at the school, or I should say what wasn't happening at the school. I, Michael and I always thought that we would put our kids into public school and mm -hmm. you know invest our money in real estate, not in in education. But then I I, I started to feel that there were so many flaws. So it was like, how can I be involved? And I went to one PTA meeting and the next and the next. And then I ended up being PTA president for three years in a row. Wow. wow. I even got the coveted Golden Oak Award. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sure you good, did. Really good, yeah. dedicated volunteer. Yeah. So uh, I had to, there was a, there was a woman that was ill mm -hmm. and uh, PTA uh, and, decided. Yeah, another to, mom. Another mom. Mm -hmm. And the PTA decided to make a hospitality visit to her in the hospital. Hospitality. That's the committee. Hospitality. Yes. That's the committee. Yeah. And so I went and made that, that I had, I had met her because we'd had an event and uh, she came to participate and 
you know, other things. But I said, oh, okay, I'll go visit her. I wasn't sure what her last name was. And I went to the hospital to see her. And mm-hmm. when I got to the hospital, there was a priest there and five little heads sitting around her bed. And the priest laughed and I said, well, what did they say? Did you have a stroke? Did you have a heart attack? And she said, no, I have cancer. Mm. And I said, oh, well, you know, you can beat, you can beat this. And I said, well, how long, you know, what do you have to do? Like chemo or whatever? And she said, well, no, I have four days. I said, four days? She said, yeah. I said, well, you know, you, that, that can't be true. And she said, no, it's, that's what they said. So in my mind, I thought, four days, this lady is going to pass away. So I, I, I made a promise to myself that I was going to visit her in the hospital for four days, which I did. I was there with her, sat by her bed, talked to her, talked about my family, her children, my children. And at the end of the fourth day, she said, I want to ask you something. And I said, okay. She said, will you take my children? I said, sure. Where do you want me to take Where do you want me to take them? <laughs> she said, no, will you take my children? Wow. And she was, my, she was holding my hands so tight and looking in my eyes. And I looked back at her and I said, yes. Okay. I'm putting you on pause right there. <laughs> you have three kids. Yes. Of your own. Yes. You have met this woman, but you don't know her. You were visiting her because you are head of the PTA mm-hmm. uh, as part of the hospitality committee, which goes and... Right. And, and brings cheer to people when they're sick at a, at, a, at a school. That's what the hospitality committee does. Correct. And so you've arrived at this hospital. This woman has her five children. I'm there with her. She has four days to live. And she asks you this tremendous, tremendous thing to, to take her children because she senses something in you. Are you the only one that's shown up during this time? Does she have other people there? Uh, she had a sister that showed up that came with her family mm-hmm. to the hospital briefly. Briefly. And, and they're not close? She uh, and her sister weren't close? They were not close enough. Okay. And uh, I, I suggested other people. I said, well, what about your sister? What about this? She has six siblings. Ah. So five living in England and then one here. Right. And uh, I just, I said, well, what about this person? What about that person? You know, this is all at the bedside. This is all at the bedside. Yeah. You know, what about your husband? Why don't they go to him? Or what about, you yeah. know, this and what, friend? And what about the friend? husband? What about the husband? Well, my, my Their fi- father. Yeah, the, yeah. The father of my five acquired children. Mm-hmm. He, uh, what, what we found out later was that there was some sort of restraining order that, he shouldn't have been involved with the children to begin with, but he did not want to uh, step up when he was with her. They were never married, they had five children together. And uh, uh, what, what, what my husband and I have decided to do is to just graciously thank him. Mm-hmm. And what I explained to my children is, it's not about who doesn't want you, who doesn't care to be in your life, it's what a gift you are in our lives. Right. What what you mean to us. Oh, that's a beautiful way to to frame it. Yes. For, for everyone. Yes, for everyone. Because, uh, oh, well, can you ride a horse? Yeah, I can ride a horse. Right. You know, or you just say yes. <laughs> are you able to swim? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Will you take my kids? Heck yeah. yeah, I'll take your kids. <laughs> so it's not so much the promise that I kept also. It's in that moment I was thinking, I don't want this woman to die with a frown on her face. I mm-hmm. want her to be happy and go on in life and, you know, in, in her journey in the spiritual world, feeling secure that her children will be taken care of. Right. Well, so you, so you made a promise. I made a promise. Um, you know, my, my thing with you is that, is that you kept it. Yes. That's, that's like, yes. cause making promises is sometimes yes. easier. Yes. I, I imagine that for you, they're one in the same because of the kind of person you are, but some people make promises and they don't keep them. Right. So you you made this promise without consulting Michael? Without did, consulting Michael. Without consulting Michael. So tell me about that conversation. When, so yeah. w- when I got home, I'm sure you, you're, you're all familiar with I Love Lucy. <laughs> yes. I love Ricky. I Love Lucy. <laughs> he was like, yeah. And I told him, he said, you did what? You said, what? What the? Ah, ah. You know, every curse word you can possibly imagine. <laughs> Five kids, what the? You know, F and S and B and are you out of your mind? And uh, she ended up living another about six months. Okay. 
And my husband and I just went on this journey of, okay, how can we save her? How can we help her? How can we whatever? And he, we both grew to love her so much that our, it was our, our mission that, okay, yes, we will, we will do this for you. We will, we will take your children and we will make sure that they go to college and that they are loved and all that stuff. So in that six months, you've, you've made this promise, you've kind of gotten him on board to get to know her then because he's... Yes, he is, he's, you know, people say, uh, wow, you're a saint, you took those kids. He's really the saint. Yeah? Mm. Because uh, the mother of my children, she was a practicing Buddhist. Uh, my husband grew up uh, with uh, parents that everything from Judaism to Catholicism to, you know, this is all very new to him. And he uh, just took everything on bravely and he's, he's, he's amazing. I don't know how many men would say, okay, my yeah. wife promised that she <laughs> right. was going to take five kids, and now I have the responsibility of taking care of these these five kids. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't. I mean, I'm looking at Hunt across the table. Um, I, you know what? You never know what you're going to do until you're in the situation. That's what I've learned, and or you never know what you're capable of until you're in the situation. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. I would I would say without being in that situation that I don't know too many people who would have done that. But, but you just don't know. So, you know, you had said to me that she had the right combination of people because Michael was adopted, right? Correct. And, and so what, what, what part of, like, did he have a desire to adopt children growing up or? Just the opposite. He, the opposite. Because he always felt like, uh, when you say the only one in the room, he always felt like he was the only one in the room that didn't know where he came from. Mm -hmm you know, who are my real parents, which I did find his real parents for him very shortly after. Oh. Uh, uh, we, before we had our daughter, Joy, I, okay. found, I found his biological parents. And, uh, he, but he always wondered, like, who am I? Where, where am I from? What do my parents look like? What are they? And his feeling was, uh, how can we abandon them? How can we leave them, you know, on the side of the road or have them go to foster care or, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you're, you spend these six months kind of falling in love with this family, this mom and her five children, right? Uh, it's the opposite. They, what? <laughs> what? You didn't fall in love with them? No. <laughs> Tell me what happened. We spent the time trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do with these five kids? Now, okay. you made this promise, but what are we going to do with them? Okay, right. how bad can the father be? So he's a little <laughs> abusive. That's okay. How bad can he be? <laughs> We found him, we decided to go to therapy with him so we could, you know, get to know him and figure out how he can be a part of the children's lives and had some dinners with him and, and that sort of thing. Uh, you can imagine, just like we didn't know the, the children, the children didn't know us. So it was sort of a honeymoon period while the mother was alive. Like, yeah. oh yeah, we're, you know, going places and doing things and this nice couple, but the minute she passed away and the reality was okay we're gonna be Kim and Mike and we're all gonna be this big family together and it, it, it has been quite the journey so I would say the words I would use would be recalcitrant ah. belligerent oh. grief-stricken okay uh, just totally different cultures everything you yeah. know you're that just the anger from their mother passing away and that mm -hmm. feeling that I can't speak for my children, but I can only imagine what it must feel like. If anything happened to me, I have two amazing sisters. They would be yeah. there in a minute, too, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So those feelings, and it was always, you know, these three kids and us five, how come he gets two carrots? How come she's this? Oh, you came to his game, but you didn't come to my game. So it was like the Brady Bunch on steroids, but real reality, like hardcore. I've learned so much about myself, what I don't know. You know, I mean, parents every day usually, or sometimes, you know, you realize, you know, having to say sorry to your children or how you handle things incorrectly, but we all have egos. And uh, it was about three or four years and before they even called us mom and dad. 
you know, because of that that period of of grief. I mean, you're, you know, it's your mother. It was all they knew. Their yeah. mother, the single mother, is what they had taking care of them. So, so, so it was rough. Yeah. It I was, mean, it sounds it that actually makes more sense yes. than the picture I had in my head. Yes. Um. So you did you did the the therapy with the dad and and tried to get to know him and, and you both decided that the children were better off with you. Well, it was really it came down to a judge deciding because we went to court. We okay. had a, a battle of okay, do we keep the kids? Do we not keep the kids? Let's go and let what, the court decide. What who, was the, what was the battle? Were you battling to keep them? We were battling to keep them. Okay, so and you you decided I'm no matter what you're keeping your promise. Right, no matter what we're keeping our promise. So. Mm. I feel like like this isn't I'm I'm presenting to you who I think you want me to be because I don't want you to leave me because everyone has left me. Right. So, yeah. Um what what has been difficult for me and my husband is you have three children, you know, you have children, you bring them in the world and you love them more than anything. And then some other children come along. So, you're struggling with you want to make those children feel loved but not make your biological children feel like you don't love them or that they're not the most important thing in the world but what what I've grown to know is your heart expands mm. and you can't you can't help it you just you can't stop the love bus you just yeah. love 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 yeah. and you 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 manage it you, you you find a way to manage it like I I think you would have done the same thing Laura I don't know mm. a mother I don't know a mother <laughs> Who could look into the eyes of another woman mm -hmm. who says, okay, you know? I, you could be right. Yes. I think you are extraordinary. Thank I really you. do. Thank um, you. And that there is something divine that channeled through you and is channeling through you to allow you to continue to do, it, to do what you did and to continue to do what you do. Uh, with this smile on your face. I mean, you have this, this light about you that you've always had. I, I might have thought that it would be extinguished um, oh. with everything that you've been through, but it's absolutely not. Yes, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting to just experience, uh, you know, love from these eight kids. I mean, mm. you know, I adore them, they adore me, and it's, I can't help but smile. I mean, I've been through so many experiences. It was, I mean, so many things. We had, uh, we had an opportunity to do a reality show, of course. You know, you're in Hollywood and people right. have heard about this. Right. And, and uh, my husband and I thought, okay, well, we could do this. That would be helpful. The money, we could, and, you know, we, we toyed around with, with it for a little while. And then we thought, how would you feel if you had a camera in your face 24-7 and you're grieving your mother and you're navigating this your 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 teenage years mm -hmm. and your schoolwork and all that stuff and you know it, unresolved issues that we all have how you know how how do you do that with a with a camera in your face no so we decided no <laughs> wow and in, a, yeah and of course it could have helped it could have oh, been would have been yeah yeah amazing finances yeah i'm an actor of course a camera <laughs> right. in my face 24 hours a day following me around would have been fantastic but yeah. not for not for the rest wow yeah but uh one of the things there was an an incident like you know when you're you're dealing with these things grief manages itself and in, in manifests itself in different ways but there was a uh, a big bowl of peaches on the table and one day I came into the room and every peach had a bite out of it. Mm. And so we would gather all the kids and say, okay, all right, who, who bit the peaches? Not me, not me. It was never, it was, you know, never anyone. Of course. <laughs> never anyone's fault. Yeah. But uh, my journey with the children has uh, brought me to other places and taught me things that I never thought I could do. I, I never, ever thought that I could have the strength to do some of the things that I've done since having these children because raising eight children, the financial responsibility, I've had to do other things. I was a, uh, a caregiver. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, hospice specialist. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you know, uh, I became a producer because, oh, not working in front of the camera because I need to go pick up kids at 3 o'clock, but I can leave the set if I'm the one mm -hmm. behind, the, behind, behind, the the, behind the scenes. So uh, just, you know, find, finding my way. And as a parent, as you know, Laura, mm -hmm. being able to say that you're sorry, mm. Being able to say, oh my gosh, I did that wrong. How could I have done that differently? What words do I use? How can I fix this? How can I? Yeah. That's what I've, I've learned. This was, this was eight years ago? Eight that, years ago. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Where do everybody sleep? Um, well, uh, we have, right now we have five bedrooms. So okay. Joyce has her own room. Two girls shared a room. Three boys shared a room and two boys shared a room. Yeah. Yes. And breakfast is loud, and dinner is loud. No, our, our our house is relatively quiet. Oh. It's uh, it's not really loud. And dinners over the years, you know, I would cook dinner and everybody would get in line and I would serve them and mm. I would prepare food like it was a you know Sunday feast because I wanted them to all be well fed. That's yeah. how I tried to show my love through the food. That's through how food. I that's how I broke through. Ah. When they made that comment about the food, I was like, oh, okay, okay. it's, I'm, it's I'm on. my cooking game? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> well, what did you do? Oh, I would. It wouldn't just be mashed potatoes. It would be roasted potatoes and mm. this and that. But, uh, you know, we were, we were raising our kids in Malibu. And I have to say, when you say financially, you know, the Malibu community, friends, family members. I mean, everyone has been helpful and generous. Yeah. Generous to us and, you know, my, my mother and... Just everyone. I saw um, Justine Kingman Petretti. Yes. Yes. Did a um, Christmas GoFundMe yes. in 2016 for yes. you guys. Tell yeah. me about that. Well, uh, my children, their mother was Greek Orthodox. So they grew up with the, you know, with Christmas and, you know, loving it. And like big uh, Christmas. Big, like a big huge Christmas. So the, celebration yes, and yes. lots of presents. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I was I was expressing that to Justine and some other mothers how, you know, Christmas time is really hard when you have two kids, three kids, four kids. You know, you you don't want to spoil them, but you want to indulge them, you wanna, you know. And uh, I said, Oh, I would just love to give them a, a really great Christmas, like, you know, mm. shock all of them or whatever. Yeah. And she said, oh, I'll help you do that. We'll do like a little, we'll do a GoFundMe and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll raise some money and we'll, we'll go, we'll shop and we'll, you know. So did so you do it? I did, I did. I'm, I'm uh, my, my kids call me the queen of Christmas. I stay, ah. I do a 24 hour number. <laughs> I stay up 24 hours, I wrap things, I tell them they're getting nothing, they're getting <laughs> bad. And then they wake up and I would walk them into a room with nothing. And then I'd say, oh, well, let's go over here. And they go, wah! <laughs> I, I know a story about you. Um, well, it's actually about Lisa, your sister, but it was about how your, your mom made you all get jobs while you were in school. And then you had to give her all the money for, for rent. I'm putting that in air quotes. Um, and then when you graduated, you got that money back in a right. lump sum to go and do something, right? Mm -hmm. Like she surprised you with it. Right. That feels a little bit like you're yes. getting nothing and then yes. here's your, your bounty. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, I, I love that story, by the way. Did, is that what your experience was with your mom? Yes. She did the same yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and I'd say, you know, I learned from the best person in the world how to be a loving, kind, wonderful mother. I would say to my mother, oh, you know, you're such a good person. And she'd say, I say, I don't know how you, how you did it all those years. And she'd say, well, you don't know my thoughts. Mm, right, <laughs> you right. Know? You just you know the actions you know, and the words. You know the actions <laughs> and the words. You don't know what I was thinking at the time. Yeah. But uh, she's been uh, my inspiration mm -hmm. to love my children better and be there for them. And, you know, when again, when I feel like giving up, she's the first person I call who yeah. says. It's beautiful. And then, so just the last thing, the how did it um, impact your marriage? Like having eight kids in the house, having three kids in the house, has to impact the the intimacy right. of your relationship. How how do you guys do that? How do you keep, or do you keep a balance? It's called lunch dates, Laura. Lunch dates. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that what it it's really is? It's called the kids yeah. are at school. Okay. We right, have right. three hours. What are we going to do with that time? They call that a nooner, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, they call it. Yeah. 
Is that is that what you guys do? You guys make sure that you have a special time dedicated to each other? Yeah, someone just said to me, you know, you it's really important. You have to take care of your marriage. You have to really, uh, you know, take walks. Because it's 20 years that you've been married? 20 years, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, wow. 20 years. By Hollywood standards? Uh, by Hollywood standards. Forget about it. Yes. Well, yeah. You know, we're, 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 I would say, our, we're, we're uh, loving, passionate people who are on the brink of divorce, like, you know, twice a month. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no lawyers have been called. But no lawyers, no lawyers right. have ever been called. Yeah. <laughs> but you make that time for each other. We, we make that time for each other. Mm -hmm. It's, um... He's a, he's a great human being. He's a really great teacher. He's musical, so he's taught the kids how to play instruments. He's taught them how to play poker. And <laughs> we're unconventional, you know, not people that get up early and, you know, start the day off with exercise. Just, you know, midnight poker games. and It's great. Yeah, That's that kind great. of thing. Yeah, I love it when I hear them say, good night, Daddy. You mm. know, even now with the, you know, teenagers. Right. He taught them all how to ski, went to Mammoth and, you yeah. know wanted them to have that experience and my husband was the you know the guy with like eight ducks behind him with their skis <laughs> <laughs> I love it I can um, I've seen pictures of all of you um, and there was a magazine article that um, I'm gonna try to put the link to on the show notes because it has pictures of you when you first got your eight oh. and then it was like a where are they now kind of thing and then they had you guys they looked like they were grown up yeah. Um, most of the kids. Yes. Or a lot of the kids. Yes. Uh, but I have that picture in my head when you're when you're talking. Uh, we're gonna go to the seg segment that is called Dear Laura, that I told you about from a from a fan, um, who feels like the only one in the room. So, her letter is Dear Laura, I often feel like the only one in the room, trying to act normal while my body attacks itself. I have neuromyelitis an autoimmune disease where my immune system targets my spine, brain, and eyes. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm drowning and I can't escape. To anyone who feels like I do, know that you aren't lazy. Uh, you fight your way through each day and it shows how hard you're trying. You aren't ungrateful. You can't help feeling this way. So it sounds like she's saying that she has this feeling that keeps her isolated, but she's trying to give encouragement to other people. Right. Which is kind of like your story a little bit, right? Yes. Like, I, I don't know anybody else with your story. Someone who has three kids who's taken on five for someone that they didn't really know very well. But what you're doing is inspiring other people, right? I hope so. <laughs> if, I, if, if I can... I would just think that this woman, you know, with her, her eyes and her, her spine and all of those mm -hmm. things to, uh, you know, as you know, with, with Troy, Troy Bayer, our, our dear friend, yes. your, your thoughts create things and the things that you think about. Mm -hmm. And I would just uh, encourage her to stay on this obviously p positive path that she's on yeah. and visualize herself being healthy, whole and um, not in pain. Mm -hmm. She's young too. She's young, how, she how young is she? I don't know exactly how young she is, but I saw her picture. Um, she looks like she's in her early 20s. Hmm. She, has a, she has a blog that she puts out regularly for people who have what she has. So, um, well, so I commend her for yeah. her, her courage. Yeah, me Just too. Just every day getting up and, and facing the world with these kinds of obstacles. Mm -hmm. Um, my mother has been fighting cancer for years. It's, it's, it's just funny. She has the same can not funny, but she has the same cancer that my children's mother had. She, she passed away from lung cancer. Oh, and your mother so has lung cancer? My mother has lung cancer. She's had stage four lung cancer for three years. Okay. And she's still alive. Yeah. Miraculously. And, um. Is she still back east? She's still back east. Okay. And uh, my sisters and I, we, we take turns going back there to be with her and my, my dad, who's just a champion, you know, with, with, with her and encouraging her. But for this, this young woman, um, I'm just wishing her an amazing healing. Mm -hmm. I just really feel that her, her strength and her courage, that she's going to make it through this, mm. you know? Yeah. 
And you are you are the optimist. Yes, I am. And you are a softie. That's what you told me. You're like, I'm a softie. Yes. <laughs> and I love that about you. <laughs> you have that big giant heart. You know, there's room for everybody. So, um, I, yeah, I think you're the perfect person to respond to this. Thank you for that. You said that um, you're starting to act again. Yes. So tell me about that. So you're not eating. <laughs> I'm not eating. I'm starving myself. Yeah. Um, how many how many kids do you have out of the house now? It's out of the house, three. Well, they're they're half in, half, half out because okay. they're still in college. But right. when they you know breaks, they come. Yeah. Home. yeah. One is studying abroad in in Europe right okay. now, and one uh, is just in San Diego, so she gets to come home frequently. Right. The uh, youngest at home is. The youngest at home is fourteen. Okay. That's Spirit. Spirit's yeah. the youngest. Spirit. Still have a baby. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. It's a great name. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Uh, I think that, what was, what was your... Oh, you get acting again. Oh, what yeah, acting think, yeah. again. Acting again. Uh, let's see, I just, I did a film with Tatum O'Neill, and I, I played, a, played a judge, and yeah, I'm doing those those things, where you, the judge, the, the psychiatrist, yeah, the, the whatever yeah. in the film, but, mm -hmm. but I love acting, and I just wanted to, I want to give it another, you know, another go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I love being on set, it's... Uh, it's just uh, a wonderful thing. I'm, I'm one of those people that I really like the human experience you can go out and take a crack at it again. I think that's a great idea. I think modeling happiness for your children is like that's the best gift you can ever give them. If you were to deny your own happiness for their sake, then that would be the model that they would see. Oh, yeah. You know? Yes. So that's great. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, and you're beautiful. Oh, thank you, Laura. Yeah. So are you. It's happening. So gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I want you, you and Hun to get married, have a beautiful <laughs> wedding. That'll be the next podcast. We're, we are, yeah. We'll, we'll have a podcast about that. Oh, Kim, um, where are you, you are on social media. I know I said you don't post a lot of your children, but yes, probably my choice. Um, where can people find you? Okay, I'm on uh, Instagram, Kimberly underscore Russell. Right. Uh, and I think that's it. That's it? Yeah. No Twitter? No, I was banned from Twitter. I oh. don't know why. Why? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what it was. But I'm going to have Scott talk that. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about the Twitter? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we'll, we'll end there then. Yes. And um, I just love you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you great. so much. Thank Fascinating. You. Yeah. Mutual. Yeah. The mm. love is mutual. Fascinating story, by the way. I have a lot of questions, so... But, and boy, I don't even know where to start. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for riding the rain. Um, it's a, since Thanksgiving just happened, I want to know what does Thanksgiving look like at your house? Oh, wow. This was a rough Thanksgiving. Was everybody there? Uh, a few people weren't there. My daughter that, that's in Europe right now wasn't there. But uh, about 7 o'clock, four of my children were curled up in a ball because oh. there was a uh, romaine lettuce recall. And I didn't know. Oh my God! I know someone else who uh, had that too. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so they so got, they were suffering. They, they were sick suffering. From it. Oh, no. One went to the emergency room and you know got mm. fluids, but it was coming out of both ends, and they were. Oh my so God! So we had a makeup Thanksgiving on Sunday. <laughs> but it's probably crazy. Huh? I mean, there's how many total? Yes, total ten. Ten. Total ten, and that's just us. So yeah. then, when other family comes or friends, and I, I picture you, you, you numerous times in the interview, you said I'd be standing there serving everybody, yes. be in line. Yes. Where did you prepare yourself for that? Like, did you grow up in a house where you? No, made... I grew up in a house where I grew up in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. in a Crown Heights, mm -hmm. in a half, uh, well, a mixed neighborhood of Hasidic Jews, uh, and uh, black kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my parents were, they were uh, readers who always, you know. Kind of introverts? Yeah, kind of introverts. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother was working on her master's and her doctorate. My father was an engineer. He worked for the post office. And um, so they were more intellectuals. And I was, was you know, an artist. And my older sister was more on, on the path of science. And You're the middle sister. I'm the middle I gotcha. middle sister. So no, I, when I when I moved to Hollywood, I used to keep my shoes in the oven. I never cooked. <laughs> I never did anything. I have friends to this day that That's are shocked true. that not only do I have eight children, but that I have any children. Right. So, um, 
I, uh, I just, I think what it was or what it has been is that I love to entertain. Mm -hmm. I love to serve, you know, and they're my children and, you know, I want to feed them and make sure that they're happy. So my family always grew up like we, the only time we bonded was really around the table. Like food was the place where we talked the most or asked the most questions. So I would imagine it sounds like to me that you're saying that that kind of, you took advantage of that to make That's it family so time. That's so true. And uh, growing up, uh, one of the things in my in my home, uh, my sister, for instance, would say, yeah, you know, they say da 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 da. And my parents would always say, who is they? Right. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to like go back to the encyclopedia <laughs> or, you know, go back Sounds to like that. my dad. Yeah, that newspaper right. article. Who are they? <laughs> yeah. Yes. That news, who are they? Okay, you'd go back to that newspaper article. So uh, dinner time, you know, people express their opinions and say mm -hmm. what they feel and and we've learned to start the sentence with in my opinion right you know or I feel or what I think or what I see or what I've learned you teach people how to have a difference of opinion and to share it without isolating others and well what what I've learned is uh, you just did it Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's, a, it's, it's our differences. I mean, um, well, that was one of the other things. Like you said, there was a clash of cultures. Yes. And I would no imagine judgment. at the table that the like, culture just represents traditions, and then blending traditions in a family, especially in the beginning, you said that both sides of the families were kind of like, "What's going on here? How are we going to?" Was that something that you just thought you would never overcome, or did you just take it situation by situation? I, I took it situation by situation. Mm -hmm. Their mother was an early riser. They were used to getting up at 6 and going to bed by 8. My three kids grew up with these artist parents who Michael's shooting in Guam, and, you know, he's uh, in a helicopter doing whatever he's got to do, and I'm right. schlepping them to New York to do a film. Um, so they, they were used to getting on planes at different hours and, you know, staying up till 2 o'clock in the morning and, you know, maybe you make it to school, maybe you don't, you know, things laid back. But the five that I acquired, they were very regimented in their schedule and that sort of thing. So they've, we've, we've both uh, learned to compromise. Yeah, you, and you grew, for, you, you have grown from it, it sounds like. Yeah, I grew up with, you know, a, a mom and dad who were working all the time. I went to the high school performing arts, got home really late at, you know, 6 o'clock because I had to take the subway and ride the train. So, um, you know, it's been boots on the ground training mm -hmm. with, with, with the kids. And I loved what you said about, um, you know, you have one kid and you're like the love of your life and then you have three and then they all have different love. And then you bring in five more and you have to find more space to develop your idea of what love looks like. And I just think that that is uh, a really important thing to talk about that you can't, you know, you, my, I used to think it would be, which kid do I love the most? And then what I've learned is, I just have different love for all my kids. Or, right. And her kids too, we have a blended family. Yes. So our Sunday dinner is, is a hodgepodge of, you know, 11, 12, 13 people going at it right and we find space for everybody um, and, we, and it's just it sounds so awesome growth for me oh yeah not yeah, going in, at it like fighting but no, no. but going at it about <laughs> opinions and ideas yes. and differences but yet all agreeing to disagree if you will sometimes correct um, and it's been I was raised an only child and I didn't know how I didn't have those skills at first I would come in and just be like what the hell's going on here Everybody's <laughs> arguing <laughs> you know but I would have to learn that that, that was a way of love actually was to have a difference of opinions and have emotions and share them with people and yes. be loved anyway and um i you know i'm always the one who grows when i watch this thing go down i've right. learned to actually just sit a lot of the times and watch it happen right <laughs> i don't have to uh, you know regulate it or maintain it or try to get it into a particular outcome so i can only imagine the level at which it is in your house it's that way um, what 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 have been all right, so two things. When you were in the first six months of trying to of trying to fix her cancer and try to figure out how you were gonna help these kids, was there a voice in the back of your head that was telling you that you were gonna end up with these kids and you had to figure it out? Or were you just trying to, like, what have I done? Did you realize, were you like, I made a mistake? How do I get out of this? Um, I, I think that a lot, <laughs> even to this day. Right. Oh my God, I made a mistake. How do I get out of this? Uh -huh. But then is there, I think I is there a deeper voice that tells you that 
keep moving forward. Yes. You got this. Yes, yes. And I, I, I at times, I think I hear their mother's voice. Mm. I think I, I hear their mother's voice saying to me sometimes, I'm so sorry. I think I hear her saying to me, wow, good job. Or, you know, oh, you blew that one, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So um, it, it's interesting. The, the day that she passed away, that, that, that my children's mother passed away, my husband was with her at the hospital because I had come home to be with the children because mm -hmm. I knew we knew that it was happening. And well, one of the things, the last things that she said to me was she said, you will never know how much I love you. Mm. And, uh, you know, thanking me. And uh, my husband said that, you know, he was there with her and she held his hands and, and he told her that she could go and she didn't have to worry that, you know, we've got this, we're, we're, we're going to take care of, of your children. And I think that those moments, like again, when we go back to promising her that we're going to take care of them, you know, we're getting to the finish line. That's what it is, right. but um, it's just it's been a it's been a great experience, yeah, I, a I, learning a learning curve. Oh, I would say the the biggest learning curve, um, and I think you set an example for compassion because I can see your head telling you one thing and your heart telling you another, and that constant battle of like following your heart versus like your head. Right. Well, I think you probably know, and Laura knows this as parents. You know, I thought that being a parent was you try to raise your children, you love them, and you want them to be like you. Mm -hmm. And then what I learned the hard way is they are <laughs> just the, they are so the opposite. Yeah. They're yeah. the opposite of everything that I ever... I think that that is probably one of the most important parenting pieces of advice is to love your kids for exactly who they are, not who you want them to be. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then everything vibes Correct. everything slips right into place i know my role i get to be supportive to them but when i try to impose my will yes oh boy it's it's a mess yeah i usually feel the worst you know right yeah so what 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 has been the biggest gift for you of doing of taking on this commitment what what have you been given that you did not see coming sort of internally maybe or you know people like to say spiritual i think it's an overused word but it might be appropriate like what what have you obviously more love you said earlier right and uh well i think that uh you know definitely humbled mm. by my children and uh i think that the the one of the the biggest gifts and the takeaway is of course none of us are perfect we try to be perfect or a lot of us try to be perfect but uh the biggest gift is i've learned to forgive myself mm. i've learned to forgive myself on a daily basis when i you know burn the pancakes or i you yeah know, you probably get called out a lot huh? yes i get called out a lot <laughs> not just by three but by eight, eight. yes yes <laughs> you know when i when i get the dance move wrong and uh you know it's 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 uh made me a braver person but when you get it right when I it get it right, it's equally oh yes, that's why I have my Wonder cool. Woman backpack I because saw that. I'm Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> well, well, thank you for coming and, and being a part of this. It's so cool. Um, I'm so glad I met you. I've only heard recently about you, so to come in and hear all of this is such a gift. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for having me, both of you. Yeah. I hope to come back and talk about you know the next chapter. Please. Good luck with everything you have going on. Thank you. Thank you.